أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from hell fire We continue asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we learned in Arabic to say in the month of Ramadan Allahumma ataq riqabana min al-nar Oh Allah free our neck from hell fire Oh Allah free the neck of my sisters who joined me tonight who is not joined um, the people who we loved them, the people who loved us, our family members, oh Allah, free them all from the hellfire, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, that said, as, Alhamdulillah, you know, I was worried that this week, it's the first week, uh, you know, Eid was only Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So Alhamdulillah, I have, you know, good, uh, good number of sisters who joined. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Let's talk a little bit after Ramadan, usually that reflection we have, uh, evaluating yourself, evaluating your past and your present and what, what, what's your goal, what you're hoping. Now, you just graduated from the University of, of uh, Ramadan, the University of Fasting, right? As we said, Ramadan has many branches. It's a college, it's a university. You have a University of Fasting, the uh, Faculty of Fasting. You have Faculty of Qiyam uh, al you have Faculty of doing Sadaqah, Zakat, and so on, SubhanAllah. But we finished, now we're graduated, and the first day of Eid, it's named by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Yom al Jaiza, the day of the reward of the prizes. Inshallah, all of you, all of you, you will receive your, your prize in a right hand. Min ashab al yamin. May Allah make you min ashab al yamin. May Allah make us min ashab al yamin. May Allah give us our big Jaiza, unlimited reward because of our fasting, inshallah ta'ala, in the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us also with uh, upcoming years, uh, many, many blessings because the blessing of Ramadan was uh, plenty. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So subhanAllah, you know, I was listening to one sheikh and he was comparing how a human being when, uh, you know, something unbalanced in our body, we know. For example, I lost the taste of sugar. And they can say, oh, did you have corona? Maybe that's the reason. <laughs> or you have a high fever. Uh, um, maybe your nor normal temperature goes up too high or too low. So if the doctor go to the hospital and the sick person is in the bed, he has a zero temperature or zero in his uh, heart be zero in his uh, lungs, breath, oxygen level. So he will pronounce immediately this person is dead, right? SubhanAllah. But if the temperature too high, uh, the heart be is uh, irregular, they might diagnose, diagnose you a certain type of disease or sickness you have, SubhanAllah. So that's the physical and that goes, could be from smelling something or tasting something or eating something, you get poisoned of food, whatever. SubhanAllah. All this has taste, you know, whether uh, uh, when you're sick, the food become bitterness, right? The medicine they give you is so bitter. Uh, you can't drink uh, certain, you know, your favorite drink because they say you have to be on certain diet and so on. But SubhanAllah, and we know that Iman also have a taste. And Halawat al-Iman bil Arabi, just like banana has a taste. Uh, a pudding, banana pudding is, has a different taste. A banana bread has different tastes, right? Ice cream, it's different. If it's chocolate, if it's vanilla, they all have a different taste. And if I say honey also, there is different type of honey. They taste a little bit different. So SubhanAllah, but if you have a previous taste of that and somebody mentioned, you know, banana to you, you, you might know, yeah, I know how banana smell or strawberry smell. I know how the taste, SubhanAllah. But uh, if you never tasted al-Iman, what we call al-Iman, halawat al-Iman, the sweetness of Iman, it might be very hard, you might say, oh, really, Iman, faith, Iman is faith, has taste also. Uh, I'm sure you all have tested, uh, tasted that, uh, you know, taste of al-Iman, I'm sure. But let's just reflect and, and talk about a little bit about how that Iman has halawa how we can taste it and how we can keep that taste going on. So I'm gonna give you one simple example as introduction to this. Uh, 
So it just happened for me that I sent really this year uh, most of my charity, my family's charity, and the cat. And maybe a lot of friends also send me money, trusting me. And they said, you know what, just send them to whatever you want to send. They knew that I want to send this money to Syria. So I did. SubhanAllah, the money went to my nephew's hand and my brother's hand in different city. Uh, SubhanAllah. What I'm going to tell you is what, you know, I wish you can understand in Arabic. I have the audio my nephew sent me, the audio. He said, Khalto, mean auntie. When I, when I cash the money and you ask me to pass it to 20 people, because I said, go ahead, put 20 people in the list, find the poorest people, the most needy people in your neighborhood, or a little bit of his far neighborhood, if you know them, just pass the money to them. I don't care who these people, then give me names, but just do it. I put you in charge. Wallahi, after he finished, he was crying. Abdullah, my nephew. You know what he said? Khalto, he said, when I knocked the door, I gave them the money. The joy the people got up was beyond you can imagine. But that's not what I want to tell you. When he will leave, he said, I felt joy in my heart as if it was my money, what I was passing. And I felt so happy that I made them happy. But it wasn't my money. But I don't know why I felt so happy. Just by doing somebody else what they ask you to do because it's a goodness deed, he felt that joy. And that is what halawat al-Iman, wallahi. That is one way to feel halawat al-Iman. I mean, I, I am sure you felt it. I'm sure one day if they were raising money, you donated money, you felt it. you and yourself, you said, Alhamdulillah, I feel good about this. I'm going to do it. I'm confident. I'm going to do it. It's not going to break my bank account. It's not going to affect my... Uh, paying my bills or my, you know, my living style, subhanAllah, not gonna affect, and you do it and you feel happy after that. Or for example, you gave a hand to somebody who maybe their car broke down. You don't know who these people, you stop on the highway and you say, hey, do you need jump? Okay, they need the jump. You just open, simply open your car, you end up having a cable and you just tell them, hey, come help. And they do it. Don't you feel happy? That's a goodness what make you feel joy. If you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the happiness is beyond than just like, oh, they told you, oh, you're a stranger, you're an angel. You know, I remember when day we were crossing a street, uh, me, Yasmin, Sophie, I think Omar and my sister-in-law, we went to Montclair University, uh, Montclair, and uh, Clift, I lived in Clifton. When we went to Montclair, they have this, uh, they call it international uh, cinema. They bring international movies. It does not run in the big theaters. Those are small theaters. And it was a movie about this uh, in French, and the movie was in French, has a title in Arabic, about this a Muslim man who owned grocery, and this Jewish young boy who will come to his store later on the story. I think you all watched it, maybe. Uh, it was a true story. It happened in Paris. And later on, the little boy become Muslim, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, if you didn't watch it, you yeah, should watch it. We watched that movie. We came out, but it was windy, 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 windy. And when I looked across the street, I saw this uh, uh, old woman. Uh, she wants to cross the street. It was still daytime, like this now, evening by me, you know, I don't need light. So subhanAllah, the woman couldn't just control herself. She wants to cross the street, but the street is wide too and two way. I left, I didn't even ask Omar. I left everybody. I crossed the street. I ran to her. I held her hand. I told her to hold me and don't worry about me. I stopped cars. I left. We crossed her, I walked her, I said, where's your house? She said, yeah, here. She was speaking barely, and she has a cane. I don't know why she was out. You know what she told me? Seriously, I'm no angel. Seriously, she said, you are an angel. God send you to me to hold my hand. I don't know who you are. I don't know the way you dress up but you are an angel. Well, of course I told her I'm not an angel, <laughs> I'm a human being. But I mean, that make you feel good because you're doing something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the humanity. But my intention was really for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel that joy. And that is what we call halawat al-Iman. So let's see now if, how you can measure yourself, your level of Iman, so that Iman should stay high right, or normal at least, not going down, normal or higher, the level of Iman higher than what you think, especially we just finished Ramadan, right? So let's share this hadith from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a hadith that says, 
man, Mada Ramadan, we just finished Ramadan, five days, I just counted in my hand. And subhanAllah, some of us start fasting the six white days, I'm sure you, you started. I'm not fasting today, but I did yesterday. So it says, Mada Ramadan, وَحَالَتُكَ الْإِيمَانِيَ لَمْ تَرْتَفِعَ So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came up to the uh, member one day, right after the Ramadan. And the member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the city of Medina had three steps. So he climbed the first step, he said loudly, Amin. He climbed the second step and he said loudly, Amin. And the third step and loudly he said, Amin. So he said three consecutive Amin, but the companions sitting in the masjid and listening and watching Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying Amin, they did not understand why he say Amin. So one of the companions had the courage to say, Ya Rasulullah, alamatu amin. What are you saying Amin for? for three consecutive time. So this is what the hadith says. Qal, this is scary a little bit. He said, Jibreel alayhi salam approached me while I was climbing the steps to come and deliver his sermon, right? He's going up to the member. He said, the first step, Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, Ya Muhammad, this is what Jibreel says in Arabic. Ta'isa rajulun adraka Ramadan wa lam the Prophet said, I mean, what does that mean? Ta'isa rajulun, a man is destroyed, go to hell. This man went to hell, is destroyed because he reached Ramadan, he finished Ramadan, but God did not forgive him. So he got nothing in Ramadan but thirst and hunger. That's all he had. He fasted, but no feeling, no experience, no connection, no joy. Yeah, man, it stays long. I'm tired. When is the Maghrib coming? Oh my God. You know, you know, sometimes, you know, there's some people, they do the Salah, they do the hijab, they do the everything. Then they complain. Oh man, I have to do this. Why, why do we have to do this? What's the reason? What's the purpose? Oh, when it's over with, with complaining. So those are like Muslim, but they're completely dry. There's no spiritual in it. There's no feel, there's no joy. Right? So that person says, Ta'isa. Ta'isa means they just fasted, but they got no reward. They're not forgiven. So the Prophet said, Amin. What's the second person? Even though it's not related to this, he said, Ta'isa, Rajulun, Man Adraka Abawaihi, Walam Yubiruhuma, who lived with their parents till their parents became old. And he did not receive the blessing from his parents. Mean he disobeyed his parents. He was not bar to to walidayhi. Bar mean you try to please them, no matter what. How hard become taking care of the elderly people? I'm sure Sister Hawa knows. Her mom, God bless her, lived 90 plus, right? And sometimes when they go through Alzheimer or through different type of sickness, it become burden. But with the humbleness, love, for the sake of Allah, you take care of them. You do not make them upset. You do not turn your face away from them. You do not neglect them. You take care of them. That person will die and Allah is pleased with them. But if they lived with you or nearby you and they died, they were not pleased with you, also you are going to hell. And the prophet says, Amin. What the third type he said, Amin, he said, Man dukirtu indahu wa lam Whoever heard the name of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you did not say, you did not send salutation to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you were cheap in praising and sending salawat to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why SubhanAllah, we cannot even say Muhammad unless we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So every time you hear Muhammad, you have to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Otherwise, you are becoming like cursed. You're going to hell. Why? Because you don't love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the sign of the love, the first and the minimum sign of the love of the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it's mentioned. It's stated in the Quran. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah and the, the angels send the prayers and blessing. It's a different type of the way we do salli 
على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم right so and, and Allah command us يا أيها الذين آمنوا oh believers if you have iman that's when halawat al iman come sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima say Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala sayyidina Muhammad Okay, and the best way to say as salawat it says as salawat al Ibrahimiya. We learn to say it when we are praying. Right after the tahiyat, we read as salawat al Ibrahimiya. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. So that's why now, you know, we evaluate ourselves. We say, I finished Ramadan. How do I feel? How did I felt during the month of Ramadan? Is it just it was a food hunger invitation? Uh, you know, being with friends just to break bread together and enjoy that, or it was a little bit more meaningful to us, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah, all of us will be accepted our fasting, accepted our sadaqah, and our, accepted our qiyam, inshallah ta'ala. So uh, it says there is many levels to, to measure your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today I'm going to talk about one feeling. There is two feeling in some in, in short way it says الشعور بالسعادة عند الطاعة. What does that mean? If I when I am doing a righteous word, righteous deeds, righteous work, righteous worship, coming with withdrawing myself near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Ramadan, like fasting, like Qiyam Layl, like uh, Quran, like memorizing, like reciting, right? All the good things, the righteous things, when I do that, I have to feel happy. Just like when my nephew said, I felt very happy when he passed, he only was like doing what I asked him to do. He just passed sadaqah to the people, not even from his own money. He felt very happy because he knew he was doing the right things. If you feel that joy of doing the right things, that's a sign that you have, you will test the sweetness of Iman and your level of Iman is abnormal. It's higher than just normal. You feel happy every time you, Qiyam Layl, you feel happy, Atikaf, you feel happy, being connected with your friend, you feel happy, SubhanAllah. The second one, it says, Ash-shu'ur bil huzn and al maasiyah You feel sad, you feel pain when you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You committed sin, no matter what that sin is. Then you feel after that, you say, man, what did I do? You cry over the sin. You ask Allah sincerely to forgive you. You said, man, it's just my friend who made me to do that. I was with the wrong people at the wrong time. This never happened again. And you cry over it and you feel bad. Or let's say something you did in, in the Jahiliya time, when you were disconnected from sisterhood and masajid and Islam even. You did sin before, you did not know. They were sin even, but now you know, today you know, what you did 20 years ago was no good. But when you think about that, you feel pain. You feel, oh my God, what if Allah don't forgive me that? What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stand in front of me in judgment day and he say, hey Madiha, you did the sin and that sin, do you remember? And your head, it says, it's going to be so down. You're going to feel so embarrassed before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that day, just because he is, he is reviewing your past. Even though he said at the end, I forgive you, Madiha. فَمَنْ حُوسِبَ halak. Hadith says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take you to the account, to the things you did as a sin, it just that alone will put you in a such pain in judgment day. You feel like you were like, you wish you were a piece of dirt, not a human being. Uh, and the end, even though at the end of that hisab, of that accountability, because you turn to be, uh, you know, uh, a forgiver, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave you, but he's still going to review. That is a forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive the sin with you, but he will review your sin. You and him alone, and he will say, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna scandal you because you never scandal your Muslim brothers and sisters. Just between you and me, Allah will say. But that alone, it's a heartbreaking and a such painful in judgment day. But Al-Afu min Allah, it's a higher. And I think we mentioned that. that that too last uh, week in Ramadan, and you all know why we ask in Ramadan about al afwa wal afia. Allahumma inni as'aluka al afwa wal afia fi dini wa dunya wal akhira. All we say, Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al afwa fa'fa'na. Because when Allah pardon you, He's not going to review your sin with you. He's not going to even talk about the sin. 
He's not gonna say, Madiha, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that, I forgave you, no. He's gonna say, just go, no hisab, no accountability, just enter paradise like that. And that's what we want, inshallah. That's, you know, in Laylatul Qadr, inshallah, all of us, we were ma'fuin uh, anhum. Inshallah, we were the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Idhabu fa antum at Go, you are free of uh, the hell of, uh, uh, your, your neck is free from hell. Subhanallah, uh, there's hadith that says also, every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya'tiqu sab'ina alfa raqba min al-nar. Every single day in Ramadan, every day, not only Laylatul Qadr, every day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freed 70,000 believers from hell. But listen, the night of Eid, the last day of Ramadan, you know how much Allah freed from hellfire? As many as the 29 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freed 70,000 every day. The last day, he freed from the hellfire as many as he freed totally from all the 29 days we fasted in Ramadan. So we have a big hope. If I, your name and my name was not in day one, not day two, not day three, not, alhamdulillah, maybe the last day. That's why also it says al-atikaf or uh, praying and increasing your, your ibadah, your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the last day, even though you don't do taraweeh, also it's very important. And that's what we call Laylat al-Eid in Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the freedom from hellfire, inshallah ta'ala, because of Ramadan we just finished, and keep our level of uh, iman, inshallah, high, um, uh, ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. So, if you don't feel happy when you do the good, righteous deed, uh, you have to check, you're not testing the halawat al-iman. If you don't feel sad because you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once upon a time or just happen, then you don't cry over that sin, you don't feel sad, you don't feel broken heart, then you have to check your heart. Something wrong with our heart. Just like a person who has a high temperature, they just run to take Tylenol or Advil, bring the temperature down, or if their heartbeat is not normal, they rush themselves to the hospital. They have pain, abdomen in their stomach, they rush themselves to the hospital. You have to take care of your body, right? But the same, you have to take care of your spiritual. So you evaluate yourself and see how you feel when you do good things, see how you feel when you do bad things. But most likely today, inshallah, we will focus on um, the most important, what bring you to feel that sweetness of Allah, of Iman, is a love, hub, Allah wa Rasuluh. Hub fillah wa Rasuluh. To love Allah and his messenger and to love for the sake of Allah and the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that love we call al hubbu fillah. Love in the name of Allah. We love someone, we love each other, we love to do something in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how important is that? And what would we do to reach that level? Let's few hadith inshallah and we will be done. It says, uh, when, once upon a time, first let's say the hadith, قال صلى الله عليه وسلم, من أحب لله وأبغض لله وأعطى لله ومنع لله فقد استكمل الإيمان, درجة الإيمان. So uh, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, this hadith sahih says, if you love for Allah and you hate for Allah and you give for Allah and you hold for Allah, you reach the Iman. You reach the level, the highest level of Al-Iman. So your love has to be for Allah, your hate has to be for Allah, your giving, whatever you give is for the sake of Allah, could be a word you're giving, right? Uh, something you hold, uh, could be your tongue you're holding, you hold your hand, you didn't do the haram, you hold it, right? For the sake of Allah, then you reach the uh, complete uh, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you reach the highest level of Iman. So uh, this is a hadith where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companion. He raised a question. What is the question? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyu ural islami awthaq? So imagine uh, when you say ural islam, you understand immediately what does that mean? Uh, ural islam mean, imagine islam is a chain. You have links connected, any chain, right? Necklace. So you have chains connected. Each chain is ura, bil Arabi. So, uh, so Islam is made of chains, right? So what will, what will be the most important chain? 
to you. Think. What do you think? So one companion said, As-Salat. You have to pray. We know Salat or Imad al-Din. We all know. If you don't pray, you're not Muslim. If you pray, you're a Muslim. You have to pray. You have to establish Salat. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Hassan, that's a good war, but that's not the strongest chain I'm looking for. So another Sahabi said, as zakat, because it says, يقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكات. You see, as it came in order, pray come, then zakat, doing charity or zakat. Says, well, it's a good deed, but it's not, that's not the strongest chain in the Urwat uh, al-Islam, in the chain of Islam. The third person said, a psalm, gotta be fasting. Fasting is hard. And Allah says, إنه لي. It's just fasting. Allah knows about fasting. Uh, gotta be fasting. He said, Fasting is a good deed, but it's not the strongest. Then one person said Hajj. He counted, they counted the four pillars of Islam. Of course, you have to be Muslim, you have to see to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They counted all the four, five pillars of Islam, and the Prophet said, No, not that one, not that one. So they said, Okay, wama hiya ya Rasulullah, then you tell us because uh, if it's not the salat, if it's not the zakat, if it's not the hajj, if it's not the fasting, what could be? He said the strongest chain in Islam is to love for Allah and to hate for Allah. So I'm going to put the light on. I think Sometimes we just don't understand what does that mean? I'm going to love for Allah. I'm going to hate for Allah. So we're going to bring an example of the most beloved companion to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he has the title of As-Siddiq, Abu Bakr, right? So what made Abu Bakr As-Siddiq to reach that level of Siddiqiyya? Siddiqiyya is the highest level you can reach as a truth saying the truth teller, the one, you know, the first Khalifa of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was like, loved him. And Abu Bakr loved Rasulullah so, so much. So let's bring one example of his lifetime to show that's an example of a love. When I say the love of Allah, I love Allah, I love the messenger. We all say that. Who doesn't say I, I love Allah? You, you ask about anybody and they will say, you know, I talk to Adam all the time. Do you love Allah? Yeah, I have Allah here. So the other day I said, come on, pray, pray with me. No, I want to watch the cartoon. He, just a word you say, yeah? He's a kid, right? Five years old, what else he's going to do? One time he pray, one time he play. So uh, sometimes we do the same. We say it, then we indulge in haram. <laughs> so because we don't know what is that love. So what Abu Bakr Sadiq did? Because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just before he died, when he said, leave Abu Bakr for me and no one will bother Abu Bakr, no one will hurt Abu Bakr's heart. Why? Because Abu Bakr Siddiq reached a level, not because he prayed more than you, not because he memorized Quran, not be because he gave so much of his wealth, but for something reside in his heart. شَيْءٌ وَقَرَ فِي قَلْبِ أَبِي بَكْرِ Something in his heart, that love, that flame of love reside in the heart of Abi Bakr al-Siddiq made him to reach the highest level of, of Iman and of Mahabba of Allah and his messenger. So this is one simple example. So the journey of the migration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he left Mecca, of course, he took Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he told him, please stay, don't leave, I'm gonna, you're going to be my friend, right? We know that. So in the way, leaving Mecca, they went to Ghar, a cave, right? And they hide themselves in that cave, which we call Ghar Thawr in Mecca. Inshallah, you will go to Hajj and you will see it from far. And this Ghar, they reached at night, dark. So what did Abu Bakr said? Ya Rasulullah. And Abu Bakr, by the way, two years younger than Omar. Than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he's the same age. It's not like a twenty years old man following the fifty-five years uh, person. No. So it, it was like same age, almost two years younger. So Abu Bakr Siddiq said, "You stay here, Ya Rasulullah. Let me go inside because the Prophet said we have to hide ourselves here." He said, "No. Let me go inside. Let me clean this cave." He said, let me clean the cave, make sure there is no scorpion, there is no instinct, we will, will bite you and kill you, Ya Rasulullah. If anything will happen, let it be me. That's love. Put yourself in his position and you're going to enter the cave at dark. 
You don't know if there's a wolf inside or a hyena or a small, could be spider killing you, right? So you're scared. You need light. You, if not, you're very scared. You're going to go in, you're going to hide. So uh, when um, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq went, he used his hand. He put his hand, because the, the cave, the cave is very small. He put his hand, he found like a lot of hole. And he knew in Arabia, uh, you know, when the weather is very hot, all the instinct hide, but when it's the sun go down, it become dark, those dangerous uh, creature comes out. So he took his shirt off, he cut it into pieces and he closed every hole in this cave. He ran off the pieces, he cut it, he stayed, he found there is one more hole. He did not close it, but he has no government to put it there. What did he do? He put his feet there. He put his feet in the hole and he said, Ya Rasulullah, come in now. The Prophet crawled in and the Prophet's head went on the side of Abu Bakr and he told him, take a break. We had a very long day. Right? He put his head down on his thigh and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took a nap. What happened that time? You know that. If that was not love, what will be? What will be Abi Bakr Siddiq doing when he closed all the hole and then he stuck, he stuck in one piece. He has to put his feet there to close it with his feet. And we know that a scorpion came and bit his feet. He felt the pain. He didn't want to move his feet to bother Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because his head there, but the tear came off from his eye. He couldn't control it. Drop on the cheek of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then when he opened his eyes, he said, why are you crying, Ya Abu Bakr? What's wrong? He goes, Ya Rasulullah, I get bit something dangerous on my feet, but I didn't want to move it because I didn't want to bother you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got up and he looked at his feet, it was swallowed this big, it says. He put the spit of Rasulullah on him and it cured immediately. That was one of his miracles. One of his blessings spit of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was not loving Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than himself, would he do that? You think it's easy, you know, we go over the stories of the companions. Oh, yeah, they did, you know, the, the journey of Rasulullah and Abu Bakr. But put yourself in that position. Okay, let's not talk to Abu Bakr. Let's not put yourself, you and, for example, one of your friends, you stuck on the road, some dangerous happening. Would you hide or would you protect your friend or your sister or your brother or your son, whatever it is? If you do that, mean you love that person more than yourself, right? We all, I'm sure we went in many uh, dangerous places. God forbid you're in store and there's massive of shooting, you know, it could happen in America. And what do you do? You protect your children or you protect your mom and your dad, right? So many stories like this uh, happen, subhanAllah. That's love. Or when uh, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked in the same story, just before he left Mecca, what did he call? He called because Jibreel alayhi salam told him, Ya Muhammad, you have to have a plan. Because uh, uh, Quraysh uh, hired more than 40 young men uh, from different tribes. Everybody will have a very sharp sword to come and line up by your room, by your house, to kill you immediately while you are in your bed or you, while you are trying to leave your bed to run away that night. So Jibreel alayhi salam told him that story. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did not know. What did he do? He called his cousin, Ali bin Abi Talib, who was young. He was just turning 18, 19. He told him, Ya Ali, you're going to take my bed. You're going to sleep in my bed. And you're going to keep my garment. So when those 40 men come, they see, they know for sure that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's his bed, it's his abaya. It's his garment where he covered himself with it. Keep that, put it on yourself. What did Ali say? Fidaka ruhi wa abi, dami wa abi, fidaka ummi wa abi, fidaka. Yani, I will sacrifice with my parents, which is more important than myself in Arabic language. I will sacrifice everything for you, Ya Rasulullah. He accepted to take the place. Guarantee, guarantee for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Ali anhu that he will die that night. But again, he didn't die because we know the story what happened. But when, when Ali slept in his bed, do you think he, oh yeah, I know the angel is gonna protect me. No, 
He accepted to die, right? Just like that person who accepted to be crucified in the place of Jesus. When Jibreel told him somebody's gonna be, look like you, they're gonna crucify him. If that person have a patient and that person won't tell the truth, then Allah will make him look like you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him in, in paradise next to you in the same level in Jannah. So somebody was on the cross and that cross going straight to heaven with Isa alayhi salam. So the same, uh, that's why he says Hawari, you know, uh, Isa alayhi salam has uh, apostles and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has his own apostles, people who chose to die for him. That's love. That's again, if you do not put yourself in that picture and feel it, feel the action, it's just a story we tell, you know, putting kids to sleep, you tell them the story. No, but this is the reality how the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, loved this deen more than themselves. That's the love. That's awtaqal uraf in Islam. That's the strongest chain. It's missing link in our Muslim community, Muslim world. You know, horrible things happening in the world. And sometimes we make, raise our hand. If the Imam remind us there is, you know, dangerous things happening in Palestine or in Al-Quds or in, in uh, Kashmir, we don't remember even. I am disconnected from the media. I don't even know what's happening in the world, right? If the Imam says something, we say, I mean, that's how we feel. Sometimes we feel like, no, 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 I have to dig in my wallet and give sadaqah, give charity to those people. Like trust those Islamic, uh, Alhamdulillah, this Islamic, in organization at least they're right there this way we can donate and nobody know like last week we talk you donate and nobody know who you are that is the best way to donate because you're not waiting for someone to say thank you Madiha. i got your money Jazakallah khairan. no we don't care right we don't care about that because we do it for the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of the muslim uh, humanity inshallah ta'ala so that is, that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, awthaq al-ura, ura mahabba fi Allah wa tubghid fi Allah. To love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have two good examples from the seerah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how are you going to reach that level? It says, fill your heart with the zikr of Allah. If your heart not always filling with mentioning subhanallah, alhamdulillah, remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because your heart need to be serenity, to be filled with tuma'nina. You're not anxious, you, you don't have anxiety, you don't have anxiousness, you don't have sorrow, you don't have pain in your heart. Even though things happen the way you don't want, doesn't matter. But subhanallah, the believers, the mu'mineen, who they have a high level of iman, they all content. They have serenity, tuma'nina, ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'inna al qulub Listening to Quran, reading Quran, reciting the meaning, the understanding, being with the scholars, being with halaqat. Somebody send you a good, you know, remind you, if you read this, this is what's going to happen. Uh, or they make dua for you. SubhanAllah, with the media, social media connected today, alhamdulillah. Uh, unless somebody send you, hi, we're going to go to a movie, come. We, we're in this club. Uh, after we drink, we have a party, then we're going to go uh, have a fun. Uh, that, Temporarily, you feel happiness when you go home, you're drunk, you don't know what you're vomiting, you don't know the pain you have, right? Then the second day, you might go to the hospital, you might not, you might oversleep. Uh, you know, the life of non-Muslim, it, it, it's not always rosy, it's not the, the way we think. SubhanAllah, sometimes they need the, that pills to put them to sleep and another pill to wake them up in certain times, SubhanAllah. So that's why it says your heart always has to be full of remembering of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always, he said, he never wasted a minute of his time unless he was in a state of istighfar or zikr or shukr. Alhamdulillah, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. You know, this Arabi word, please, you know, memorize them in Arabic. Uh, know how to say Alhamdulillah at least, SubhanAllah. Uh, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad sallallahu alayka ya Rasulullah. Allahumma salli wa sallam barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Certain, certain prayer supplication, you know, it's good to know how to say them in Arab, inshallah. We keep them all the time in our tongue. Otherwise, our iman, our Islam become very dry. Have no, no taste, no feeling. Uh, you know, one of the companions said, 
uh, one of the, not companions, this one, it's, it was a religious person. He, he was a very old, he lived very old and he did a lot of good deed. He's a famous older man, good deed. He did a lot of good deed in Damascus. You know, he participated in this university where the students from farmer country, they come and they learn Islam. Just like uh, our new sheikh in uh, uh, Masjid uh, Wayne Masjid, he studied in Damascus, believe it or not from Russia, he came and he studied in Damascus. Uh, Zaid Shakir, Imam Zaid Shakir, believe it or not, he studied in Damascus. Uh, I mean, there's plenty, you know, there's plenty we don't know all over the world. Uh, SubhanAllah, when they go back to their home, they become scholars and and da'iyah, uh, du'at. Uh, look, look Zaid Shakir, how much he's doing. At least he has open up a university, the first university, uh, a credential Muslim uh, university in the West and America and Europe, Zaytuna College, right? SubhanAllah. So uh, look how much they do. So this man was uh, um, a teacher in that university and a and a very righteous person, which is, he, they helped not only uh, students, foreign students, also those uh, madaris in Damascus, they uh, spend money, they help raise money and spend it to the orphans, uh, memorizing classes for men, women, a lot of good deeds. So just before his death bed, he was telling one of his students, he said, um, we did not do any good deed in our life. Oh, the good deed he did. We did not do enough good deed in our life. But the only thing I'm counting on, he said, that I kept my present with the righteous people. I loved the scholars. I loved the righteous people. So when I returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those goodness, the righteous people goodness, they will be my intercession to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that please, he was our man. Let him be with us. And that is promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you have to love uh, Salihin. We have to love the friend of Allah. We have to love Awliya Allah. We have to love the Anbiya Allah. We have to love Shuhada. We have to love this righteous people who we know them in person or we don't know them in person. Uh, you know, how many scholars we listen to them on, you know, on, on YouTube, but we never met them in person. That's fine. We love them. We say, Alhamdulillah for them. Wallahi, if it wasn't for them, uh, Wallah, we will be in trouble. How many of us can read Arabic books and learn in Arabic and, and go ahead? And I, when I read these books be, before, I swear to God, I need another trans, translation, interpretation. I don't understand why I'm reading Arabic sometimes. That's how deep the Arabic language. So if it wasn't of these scholars, whether they are Arabic or in the language you understand, it could be your Serbian language or your Spanish language, your French language, whatever language, right? Alham Alhamdulillah, we have these scholars among us. They help us. Alhamdulillah, everywhere you go, there is Islamic center. And if you say, I hate this Marrakesh, I hate this Islamic center, I hate this Ayyama, then who do you love? Do you love the movie stars? Who do you love then? The images of, of uh, uh, the advertising for alcohol and, and gays and lesbian and blah, 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 blah. Who do, you know, if you don't love somebody, then you love somebody else in that place. If you don't love Allah, you love something else because this heart need to be loved and this heart need to love. If you don't love the halal, you're gonna love the haram. That's why it says, be careful. And imagine this man after 90 years of serving Muslim Ummah in Damascus, graduating all the scholars and helping all this, all his wish that he loves the righteous people. Maybe that will be the way to go to paradise for him. So now compare that to me. Uh, I don't know about you, but me. I'll be in trouble if I don't love our Imams and our scholars and our sisters, the righteous, righteous uh, sisters who are doing the right things, right? If we don't love the Sirat al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa if we don't love Ummahat al Mu'mineen, our mothers, beloved mothers, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we never met them. We never understand even their lifestyle enough to love them, but we have to love them, right? So that will be, inshallah, our way to go to Jannah and to be with them because the hadith says, Al Mu'min al Muslim, Al Rajul Yuhsharu Ma'aman Ahab. Allah will resurrect you with the people who you loved. So watch who you love. That's what al hubbu fillah wal kurhu lillah. So I'm going to say one more story maybe because I promised you I'm not going to make it longer than an hour. It says, um, right after the battle of Badr, okay, uh, the Quraysh defeat, were defeated. Uh, they ran away. 
and uh, so many of them got killed and captured as a prisoner of war in the hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the city of Medina. Now, I'm gonna take you to Mecca, where still the kuffar there, and one man says, Umair bin Wahab, that's his name, he is sitting next to Safwan bin Umayyah, those are the head of the Quraysh, the kuffar Quraysh, they didn't die in the battle, but Umair, son did not return home because he was captured by the Sahaba in the hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a seer, he's a prisoner. So he's, he's uh, complaining to Safwan, they were in Hajr Ismail Alayhi Salam. Imagine the Kuffar lived controlling the Kaaba and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was kicked. <laughs> Imagine now today, after the opening of Mecca till inshallah the end of the world, Hajr Ismail and the Kaaba inshallah in the hand of the believers always. But back then it was like more than 22 years it was in the hand of the Kuffar. So he said, Safwan, something bothered me. Wallahi, if it wasn't of the debt I, ha I owe, you know, I have to work, pay my debts. And the orphan I stuck with to take care of them, I will take my sword, go to the city of Medina and kill Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how much I hated Muhammad. And I, then I free my son and bring it back to Mecca. You know what Safwan told, told him? That's the only things what stop you to go to, to Medina? And to kill Muhammad, he goes, listen, between you and me, I will take care of your debt. Safran bin Umayyah was very rich. He said, I'll pay your debt and I will watch your children, the one you worry about them, the orphan, they're just like mine. I will take care of them till you come back from Medina. Safran jumped, uh, Umayr. Umayr jumped, he sharpened his sword, he put poison in the sword. He said, you keep your word, I keep my word. You keep a secret between you and me. Don't tell anybody and I will go to the city of Medina. Nobody will know what, what's my intention. Safwan promised, I'll keep it a secret. Umayr promised, keep it a secret. He came to the city of Medina, right after battle, uh, battle of Badr. So when he entered the city of Medina, he mixed with a Muslim, but not many people recognized him. He's coming close to the center of Masjid al-Nabi. Umar ibn al-Khattab saw him. When Umar saw him, of course, Umar knows every person in a Jahiliya and in Mecca. He saw Umar. He said, you, what brought you here? You're a kafir. What brought you, you here? Then Umar stood and he said, move, Umar. I want Muhammad. Just like that. So Umar grabbed his chest and his clothes like this. He said, no, you're not going to, the, to see Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his voice was so high. He said, you're a kafir. I'm going to kill you right now. And Umar has a sword in his hand. And then when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard, he's inside the message. He said, what's going on? They told him what's going on. He said, tell Umar, let him come in. So Umar brought him as like this to Umar. The bad person is Umayr. Umar ibn al-Khattab brought him like this. He said, Ya Rasulullah, give me a command. Just I want to cut his head off. He's a kafir. He came from Mecca. I know he has a bad intention. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, relax, leave him, let him go. So Umar left and he left the man and he, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has such a serenity, sakina, tuma'nina, calm. He told him, what got you here, Ya Umayr? He goes, you know, Ya Rasulullah, First, he said, good morning, sabah al khair. Then he said, now we have a better way to say that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So he taught him the greeting of Islam. And Umayr said, you know, my son is in the prison. I came here to free my own son. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told him, is that all? Nothing else in your mind? He goes, no, nothing else. He said, Umayr, Nothing else in your mind? He said, no. He said, but you have a sword in your hand. No intention with that sword? So Umayr couldn't say, I'm here to kill you, right? He's waiting for a moment. He goes, no, nothing else. You know what the prophet said? But how about you and Safwan bin Umayyah when you sat down a few days ago in Hijr Ismail and you promised you keep secrets to each other that you're gonna come Poison that sword you have and kill me with that sword. He looked at him, he was frizzed. He said, nobody know, nobody know what I told Safwan and Safwan promised me he's not gonna, nobody know this, my intention. But to Allah, he said, Umayr, it's every time I watch you or I listen from you, it just brings me more proof 
that you are a messenger of Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa annaka rasulullah. Nobody knows this unless you are God, uh, God sent you the news and God told you what's in my heart. So I believe you are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He became a Muslim that minute. And then immediately Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told the companion who's sitting, take his hand, take him out and teach him the rest of Islam. When he came out, Umar ibn al-Khattab still waiting. He knew that Umar accepted Islam. He hugged him and he kissed him. You know what he said? Subhanallah, a few minutes away ago, he said, the pig was beloved to my heart than Umair to my heart. After you announced that you are a Muslim, he said, you are the most beloved brother to my heart. That is the love for the sake of Allah. How can Umar's heart flip immediately from feeling that this man is najas, impure, just like a pig, he called him khanzir. And now after he did the shahada, he embraced him and he started loving him immediately. How can he control that heart from hating for Allah to loving for Allah? That is the miracle of Iman. That's how we have to compare our heart. When we love for Allah, how we love for Allah, how we experience that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when you love for Allah, the fruit is only love back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will obtain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what the hadith says, قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَدِيثُ قُبْثِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says, وُجِبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَحَابِّينَ فِي وُجِبَتْ مِنْ It's demanded, my love. Allah says, my love is demanded to the people who love each other for me. لِلْمُتَحَابِّينَ فِيَّ الْمُتَجَالِسِينَ فِيَّ Those are the ones who are sitting together for the sake of Allah. This is a perfect example. We have someone from Vienna. Australia, Australia, we have someone from uh, New York, we have someone from New Jersey, corner, I am from Dallas, what got us together but the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Wallahi mutajalisina fiya, that's why being in a circle of halaqa, uh, attending al halaqa in the masajid or in a, in a YouTube halaqa, still halaqa consider, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will love you back. Al mutazawirina fiya, if we can visit each other physically, for the sake of Allah. You spend effort for a friendship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do effort for them and they do effort for you just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're not sisters. It's not because you have a business uh, transaction between, but you spend effort for each other for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like that simple hadith, it says a rajul, a man was traveling from a village, he's going to another far village. On the way, halfway, a man appealed him, and that man is an angel. We know that later, but the man doesn't know he's an angel. A man appealed in him, and he told him, hey, where are you going? The man said, oh, I'm traveling to another village to see a love brother for me. There is a brother there, I love him. So the man asked him, oh, are you going to visit him because there is a business transaction, a return money you borrow from, or a borrow money from him? Yani something for this dunya? He goes, no. He said, is he related to you? Maybe is your uncle, is your cousin? Is your... He said, no. None of this. He said, so what got you to visit him? He goes, I loved him for the sake of Allah. I just love him. I miss him. I want to go visit him. You know what? He said, I am an angel. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sent me to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved you for the same reason, no other reason he loved you, but because you love that brother who you're about to visit him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah loves you. 
So let's visit each other for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the visit, sometimes it's a phone call, it's a YouTube, sending each other messages to remind each other, you know, how to do righteousness, good deeds, jazakum Allah khair, and you all do these things, right? Virtually, uh, alhamdulillah, let's all should always, you know, tell each other we love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This nothing put us together, no same language. Look, if we sit down and count how many different languages, how many different races we have, it will be so many. We are only uh, 14 sisters here, subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, uh, that's why uh, the love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a big reward. Allah will love you. And once you, you achieve that, once you achieve that, uh, it says uh, you will stay always, always connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because once Allah loves you, you love Allah, nothing else will satisfy your heart. So you will continue doing the righteousness all the time. Inshallah. If I made any mistake, it's my mistake. Anything was right from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will always say, as, as I mean it, I love you more than ever for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us the sweetness, halawat al-iman, of iman to taste it every day in our life. And jazakum Allah wa khair. Let's see the chat. Sister Madiha, Aid Mubarak. Allah, you are speaking.